So this is what we're talking about, the project tray over here on the left. And these are your data file numbers uh, right here. So output outputs are in data file zero, but outputs you can't move around. So you don't have to you don't have to specify the data file on outputs and inputs. When we get in down into this status, then we'd have to use what? We'd have to use S2. Uh, B3, that's your binary files. Those are your bit files. So any instructions that deal with bits, we can use this file right here. But why we have to specify the number is I can come over here and, and right click and put new and say I want another data file and it's going to stick a data file what? Nine down there. So you have to specify the file number, right? You understand that? Because now I've got two bit files. Everybody okay? And then I can have 256 words in every bit file. So every on every data file, let me rephrase that. Every data, every one of these data files, uh, except for timers and counters, but we'll talk about that. Consists of 256 different devices. Why we have to specify B3 because that information is kept here. If I specified if I specified B9, then that information would be kept in this data file, right? So that's why we have to identify the data file number. I'm gonna delete that. So here's the status. Uh, we'll look at that a little bit. Binary timers counters. Uh, this is as far as we'll be going uh, this semester. Uh, if you get into uh, if you take PLC2, which is ILT 196, uh, then we'll be talking about the other data files, your, your control data file, uh, your integer data file, your floating point data file, and we'll also re uh, uh, discuss a, a long file. But notice long file is not even listed on this guy, so I'd have to come out here and I would have to put in a long file. Now notice it all, it's automatically going to give it a file number of 9, but you can use anything up to 255. Uh, so now I've put in a long integer file, L. Uh, by the way, you can give it a name. Uh, so you could call it long or whatever. Let's see, let's see if I can do that. Right, there we go. Okay, you okay? That makes sense. Okay. So here's our timers. We'll deal. So we're going to be all the way down into here. So we'll be we'll we'll do C fives. Uh, we won't add any data files this semester, but you can see you can do that. If you get on the 1,000, by the way, it's a fixed PLC. Guess what? You can't do. You can't add any data files. But still, they, they have the number there, so if you get into a PLC like the 1100, you can add as many data files as you want to, as long as you don't run out of memory. Okay. And then if you don't like it, you can do what with it? You can delete it. Everybody okay? So here I'm using a B3. What does that mean? Well, that means this guy here does not use one of my outputs. So we're going to reserve outputs for things that the PLC needs to control, right? Like lights, uh, solenoids, relays, right? You understand that? That's what's going to be, we're going to use our output. If the relay does not require any external, any, it's not going to control any external device, then you'll we'll use the B3 file. And these are what we call internal relays on PLCs. And every PLC supports them. Uh, like I, Siemens call them M for mem memory, uh, M for memory. But uh, Alan Bradley calls them B B3 for bit files. Everybody okay? This makes sense. So this right here does not use a contact, but I can come down here now, and I can use B. I can use a run again, and then it'll come up here and automatically do what? It automatically fills in the indirect in in information. So what's nice about symbols and what's nice about tags is once you assign an address, then you're not dealing with addresses anymore, you're dealing with names. So uh, in if you take PLC3, which is PLCs and Automated Systems, 
you'll set up your tag table first. And once you got your tag table set up, then you're not dealing with addresses anymore. You're dealing with what? Names. And the diagrams or the prints will give you is for the actual line, and they use symbols. So once you once you get your uh, your your tag table set up, your symbol set up, then all you're going to do now is just look at your diagram and type in the name, right? Does that make sense? And it automatically put. It's just like your contact list on your phone. So how many knows all that? Not hope knows all the phone numbers inside your phone. What do you know? You know the names, right? So that's what's nice about. Uh, so here I want to assign this to an output. Someone will say uh, out colon zero slash zero. So how can I use zero here and use zero there? Yeah, we're in a different data file, right? Does that make sense? So you're right. So we, we have output zero and we have input zero. Uh, then we'll, uh, I've, I've cli I clicked off of it without assigning a symbol. So how would I go back and assign a symbol now? I'm going to right click on it, choose what? Edit symbol. And then we can give it some, give it some name. Everybody okay? Now this is an output. This is going to literally generate an output that I could have something hooked up to, right? You understand? A B3 file. These are what we call internal. This is what we call internal calls, which means they are all programmed. They don't generate output. But what you don't do is you don't sacrifice one of your outputs to do nothing, right? You understand? On this, I only got what? I only got ten. I got ten outputs, and I got six inputs. Now, what's nice about your inputs is I could have I could have one. So this is a let's, let's see if I brought my camera up. So this is what we would have to do on uh, this is what we'd have to do on relay logic or relays to assign the same input to multiple rungs. Well, that is my turn, guys. This is good. So this is what we this is what we used to have to do, or we had to do on relay logic. If I wanted multiple, if I wanted one push button to operate a bunch of contacts, we'd have to do what? We'd have to stack them like this. We don't have to do this with PLC. So I can have a push button, just a single, normally open push button out there. And all I have to do is just assign it to the same address. Oops. Got to insert another rung first, right? So I could come down here in uh, my in my start button. I could come over here and just type in that. And how many times can we use? A, so I've only got one contact on my push button, but how many times can we use that address? As many times as you need, right? You understand that? So that's what's nice about a PLC. Uh, this guy right here has got contacts. Uh, this is a relay that has multiple contacts on it. Let me find it. Should be somewhere. Yeah. So this is a relay. It's got eight contacts on it. And once I run out of contacts, I'm just out of contacts. That camera's not on, even though it did pop up. So this is a relay. It's got all these contacts on it. It's got a contact. Some of them will normally open. Some of them will normally close. Okay, this would be a control relay. But here, if I wanted to assign this guy, this guy right here, this output right here, if I wanted to use some internal contacts, then all I got to do is just come up here and use the same name. And how many contacts can I use off of, relay, off of this guy here? I could use as many as I want. So that one, that's motor controls. Motor controls the same. The, if you're going to control it by the same coil, you got to have what? You got to have all these other contacts. 
uh, with PLCs, we can use that address as many times as we want to. Here, we'll assign this to another output. By the way, you don't want to do this. RLT. Notice you did not, I'm going to come up here and check this right here. It's going to say I have no errors because it's in the right sense. What I've done is I've assigned two different rungs that has different logic. I've assigned it two different, I've, I've assigned it to the same output. So what does that mean? Well, that means if this rung is false, no matter what goes on here, this one's false. So the only way this would work if both of them is true. So what we're saying is don't do what? Don't reuse a output address. You can use the context of an output, but you can't you don't need to reuse an output address. Because one thing, it don't show you you got an error, but the only way both output the only way both outputs would be on if both were on for true. And this happens in this well, it happens more in the next class than it does in this one. Because we're not going to be doing much of this. But notice it did give me a syntax error. It said it's what? It says it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> there are some situations that we do do that, but got away. But so, everybody okay? Is everybody okay with the project trees? Oh, by the way, process are up. Now, what you probably need to get used to is you need to be you need to get used of saving this thing up once in a while, because what's going to happen is you're going to forget something, right? You might accidentally come over here and do this. I come down accidentally and I put upload. Now what's upload going to do? It's going to take whatever program is currently in the PLC and it's going to go there. And that could wipe out your current program, right? You understand. So this is different the internet. I want to send something to the PLC. I'm going to bring something from the PLC and bring it into my programming application to do it upload. So that's, that gets you messed up. I've done that before. I've wiped out a program. Huh? I've done a few. <laughs> Not a U.S. Steel. U.S. Steel had a, when I was out there, we didn't have any PLC. Everything was done. Everything was done in relay logic. So everything. So they had some computers, full-blown computers that controlled devices, but those programmed in high-level languages. Uh, we had uh, computers running number eight blast furnace, but they wasn't PLCs. Uh, from what I understand, they did convert it over uh, number four galvanizing line over to PLCs. Uh, and did away with a ton of control relays. So PLCs are going to get rid of all these control relays. It's going to get rid of all these relays that has to have all these contacts on them, right? Understand? It's going to get rid of all these push buttons that has to have all those contacts to be controlling different things and different runs. So it, it really simplifies circuits. So all your push buttons are going to be one contact push buttons. All your sensors are going to be one contact sensors. Uh, that makes sense because now we can bring in a sensor as an input and how many times can I use this contact right here? I can use it what? Multiple times. So it's really, really simplified things. But this is the big thing right here is getting rid of these control relays. So when you get into a big, big relay logic, what you find out that 90% of the relays are in there are just for control. They're not they're not in the power section, they're in the control section. And every one of those means those could be replaced by an internal coil. So we got a picture somewhere, I can see where they can find it, where they have a cabinet uh, before the PLC was put in there with all the relays, and then they have the cabinet after they put out a, P a PLC in there, and it got rid of all the control relays. It doesn't get rid of the power relays, right? PLCs can't run a lot of power. They can't provide a lot of power. We text it on our cell phone back here. We don't do that in my class, guys. Okay, what are you doing on your cell phone? Okay, well, 